Right, today we're going to take you through the engine bay underneath a 2 litre BMW diesel. Take it away. Okay, so we open up the bonnet. We've got, uh, it's a, like it says, 2 litre diesel BMW. Uh, this is a 118M Sport with a manual transmission. And it's uh, 2010. And this one's done around 100,000 miles, give or take. So we're going to start with um, telling you this is a, it's a rear wheel drive, which means that the engine is longitudinally mounted, meaning it runs from the front to the back rather than side to side. Uh, as with a, with a front wheel drive car, that's what that'll do. Uh, we can't see everything right now because of all the plastics in the way, uh, but we'll get into that later on. We're going to start with what we can see. So uh, we'll start off, we've got, this is the air intake at the front and the air flows through both of the front grills on the bumper, as you can see. And it's, uh, it goes through this one connecting pipe, which takes us to the bottom of the air box, or the air filter box, as some would say, uh, or the air filter housing. It's not really a box, it's more of a, it's more of a housing, as, as they say. Uh, and yes, you guessed it, this holds the air filter, and this can be changed quite easily by yourself, if need to be. Um, the bottom, the bottom of the airbox is bolted to the uh, body of the car, as you can see, and uh, you know, it makes sure it stays in place and doesn't move around. Uh, when the air passes through this filter, it goes to the the uh, mass airflow meter. This one was made by Bosch, uh, as you can see, which is a good brand. And uh, the, obviously, the part number's there if you ever need to replace it, and it's quite an easy, again, another DIY job. Uh, and this this will relay any information to the engine ECU about the air, and it allow then allows it to flow into the engine itself. Um, the pipe that's connected from the mass airflow has a bit of a flex in it. This is allows the engine to have a bit of movement with the airbox, stops anything cracking and makes you know stops it uh, making a lot of noise, and it's a uh, make sure it's nice and solid. And I'll show you what's underneath there later on. Uh, so what else can you see on here before we get underneath? Well, we've got down here, we've got the bonnet catch. And uh, it's connected to a cable that runs through into, on this instant, the driver's side footwell. On, but on some cars, it'll be on the opposite, opposite, the other side. Up the top, we've got the, this is the lock, the catch that will go into that and it'll hold it into place. Next to it, we have the yellow lever handle, which is a secondary catch that prevents your bonnet from opening when you're driving down the road. Keeps it in, set, in place. So if we go over to, back into the engine, onto the driver's side, we've got, this is the coolant tank or the reservoir, also known as the header tank or the overflow. This is where you top up your coolant and your antifreeze. And if we uh, just open the cap on, on this one, it's, uh, it's not a transparent one, so it has a floating level indicator, which you can see here, which will obviously tell you the fluid that's in there. On most cars though, you'll be able to see through, and that will you keep it between the maximum and the minimum, and then you should be safe. Now obviously, word of advice, don't open it after the car's been running, or you'll be hit with some hot fluid. Uh, right, if we go over, and we can see we've got some radiator pipes and these radiator pipes connect everything together and they run through into the behind the dashboard which enters into the heater mat matrix to provide heating inside the car and uh, just above that we've got the oil indicator lever or the dipstick obviously to check that you wipe it down stick it back in and you can measure your oil put that back in and we follow it along, and this is where the, we top up the oil. We've got the the oil cap, turn it anti-clockwise, and that's where you'll put your oil in. Obviously, check your type of oil you need for this particular engine. Um, next to this, we've got the washer washer bottle neck. This is where your um, washing fluid will go. Obviously, a concentrated mix with a bit of water. That'll uh, obviously keep your windscreen nice and clean. Just make sure you put the right quantity in, dilute it. And then just above here, you'll notice we've got a little positive terminal. This is for jump starting the car as 
the battery in this is in the boot and it's quite awkward to get to so this terminal is the positive terminal so you'll connect to the you connect the negative to an earth so you can connect onto any part of the metal of the car connect the positive to there job done jobs uh, and you can get that jump started without having to mess with the battery in the back Uh, so then the actual engine cover itself is, is not just for aesthetic purposes it actually gives a little protection to the injection system from the elements and whatever and it's also an acoustic cover and it will, will reduce a lot of clattering and ticking noises that these diesel engines do tend to make uh, and just down from this you'll notice a silver pipe this is the air con hose and uh, you can pressure test this with the valve and you can top you can top that up from there as well. Obviously, make sure it's done properly, as you don't want it to be leaking. Uh, and then back up to here, we've got these are the cross braces, and uh, they contribute to the structural integrity of the car, which is more important when you have a convertible such as this particular model, as uh, the lower brace spans the width of the car into an X shape. So we make our way up to the scuttle panel part of the car. We've got, um, there's two sensors either side. This one is a bonnet sensor, which is the equivalent of your alarm underneath your bonnet and make sure the bonnet's down and make sure it's not been tampered with in any way. Um, parallel to that, we've got the air quality sensor, which uh, detects what sort of air quality is coming into the car and out of the car. Obviously, depending where you live, that'll be uh, doing a good job. Um, so and then next, each side of the scuttle panel here we've got first of all on the left we've gone under this cover there we have the brake servo and the ABS pump brake servo is where your brake fluid will go obviously you can get in there with the lid and you can top it off just make sure it's between the maximum and the minimum um, obviously it keeps, keeps nice and hidden away in here and then pull that up, stick that back on You'll notice just above here we've got some leaves stuck in. These are actually the drains for the car. And uh, you're best every now and again checking these and removing any leaves or debris as if these get blocked up, it can end up in your car. And obviously it's a car, not a jacuzzi. We go back over and underneath this cover, we've got the engine ECU which on this particular car is covered and in its own little lockbox where as most cars it'll be on the side of the chassis either down in the down by the strut or side of the engine obviously open to the elements so this is a much better way but if, if you ever need that accessed or reprogrammed you know where it is in the middle we've got the pollen filter uh, it's an, this uh, obviously can be removed again to change if you wanted to by yourself with some sockets and it's just clipped in and obviously you'll need to remove this if you ever have an issue with any sort of window wiper motor or anything regarding that part of the car um, and then just in the shop there we've got if we just look up we've got some washer jets and uh, obviously these are what spray onto the windscreen uh, some models they will be heated some they won't be and this will run down into this side of the car down underneath the wing on the BMWs and there'll be a wash up the bottle and obviously that is connected to the uh, neck and it uh, all works together and you know how to top that up um, so yeah that's pretty much what you can see and um, we're gonna remove some plastics get this acoustic engine cover off and uh, I'll show you what else we've got going on <laughs> 